So, agreement between political parties here, but not yet, it seems, on the other side of the Atlantic. Barack Obama has been meeting Republican senators in the latest attempt to find a way out of the stalemate that has kept the federal government shut for 11 days so far and threatens to cause the US to default on its debt. The fact the president is talking to his staunchest foes is a big development, but the two sides still appear far from a deal to get the government running again. Sarah Smith is in Washington. What's going on there? Well, it feels like there is a little bit of movement here, Kristen, because the two sides are at least talking to each other, even if it is only talks about talks at this point. As you say, Republican senators have been in the White House today talking to President Obama, but they came out of there saying that they really hadn't managed to reach any kind of agreement at all. The Republican readership do recognize that it would be disastrous if the US were to hit its debt limit next week. So they do want to find some kind of deal, even if it's only a temporary solution. But they're stuck between a rock and the Tea Party. The powerful Tea Party wing of the Republicans don't want to do a deal to pass a budget and reopen the government unless it includes dismantling Obama's health care reforms. And that's something the president will not even discuss. The Tea Party also don't want to do any kind of deal that will raise the debt ceiling unless they also get massive cuts in government spending. And I've been down to Tennessee to meet some of the diehard Tea Party activists who will not let their representatives in Washington cut a deal. Welcome back in, my friends. It is the Phil Valentine Show. The president wants to inflict pain and, and create a crisis. About 11% of the people thought that Obama was the Antichrist. I don't think he thinks he's the Antichrist. I think he thinks he might be Christ. They sure do say what they mean in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. This is a long way from Washington, D.C. The current political crisis looks and sounds different here. He thinks he's God's gift to politics. This is the Tea Party's heartland. People here are not too bothered about the government shutdown, and they don't believe the president's dire warnings about economic Armageddon if the US hits the debt ceiling and can't pay its bills next week. It is Tea Party activists in places like this who engineered the current political crisis, and they don't see it as a problem. They see an opportunity to try and stop President Obama from doing just about anything. We always talk about dying for what we believe. In Tennessee, the Tea Party comes with fries fueling their appetite for the fight against the White House. Unless we're prepared to die, we will never take the fight to where it needs to go. That's right. Local activists are determined to make sure the Republican Party leadership do not cave in and cut a deal with Obama. Convinced they're fighting to preserve the fundamental values that built America. Show, show of hands if anybody thinks, is, is President Obama a threat to America? His philosophy is completely contrary to a constitutional republic. He's a socialist, a Marxist. When the president, the commander-in-chief, is cast as the enemy of the state, there isn't much room for compromise. Are you prepared to risk the US defaulting on its debts? Yes. No compromise at all? No, absolutely no compromise at all. Because they're trying to put the screws to us so that we will give up, and we will, but they are very mistaken. You're not giving up? Absolutely never. I will never give up. I will never give up to my dying day for the freedom that was given to us by God. What are you saying to your representatives in Congress and the Senate? We are tired of wishy-washy, spineless representation, and we want people with principles and courage. And you want them to do what? And I want them to hold the line. This is below the belt, absolutely below the belt. On American talk radio, right-wing shock jocks are broadcasting to people who feel their voices aren't being heard in Washington and are getting deeply frustrated. I think it's been angry ever since Obama got into office. Uh, is it angrier now? I think because of some of the things he's doing, I think it really hacks people off, sure. But I think that there's just a general disgust with the way things have been done in Washington for quite some time. And I think people want that to change. The elegant Grecian columns might look a little like the U.S. Capitol in Washington, but here in Tennessee, they are not talking about doing a deal to end the standoff. They don't want their representatives making any concessions. They think it's their constitutional duty to stand firm. Tea Party activists are obsessed with the U.S. Constitution. They like to hand out little copies of it, like Christian evangelists with Bibles. But here's the irony. The Constitution deliberately designed a political process that was supposed to force compromise in Washington. And now it's the Tea Party who are refusing to compromise. 
They're threatening any Republican congressmen or senators who are even thinking of compromise that they will face a Tea Party challenge at the next round of primary elections. Joe Carr is already running to unseat an incumbent Republican senator. He doesn't think is quite conservative enough. Too many times Republicans, both in the House and the Senate, have misunderstood when they should stand and when they should compromise. And what we find is they compromise too much and stand too little. But people like you are able to hold the line by making yeah. sure that any representative who thought about voting with the president knows that they'll face a primary challenge from the Tea Party. We've made it a little bit difficult for those who might want to negotiate with the president on this issue, rethink their position, and that's a good thing. It won't be a good thing in Murfreesboro or anywhere else if the U.S. does hit the debt ceiling and defaults next week. The economic consequences will be felt everywhere. But people here say that's a price they are prepared to pay. Because for them, this isn't a budget battle. It's a fight for the very soul of America. Back here in Washington, Republicans are trying to do some kind of deal to raise the debt ceiling, but only temporarily, only for a few weeks, so that they can buy some time to carry on having this much larger row about health care and about government spending that will probably drag on for months to come. Thanks, Sarah.